Hey everyone, so for today's video I wanted to take a quick look at some of the stuff in 3.11, which is now in PTU Wave 1 if you haven't heard. If you have the chance to check it out for yourself, you might want to do so for a few reasons I'm going to show you in this video, but I'm going to go through some of the cooler stuff in the patch notes and a few things that didn't make it into the patch notes. Before we start though, I just wanted to remind all of you that my giveaway for Star Wars Squadrons is ending soon because the game will be out soon, so be sure to enter that soon if you want a chance to win. Let's get started. So the first thing you'll notice when booting up the game is that they implemented those changes to the menu that they talked about earlier, and it does look a bit nicer. It's also nice to have the previews of the different locations before you choose one to load into. So not a massive change, but I think it makes things a bit nicer. A lot of the things in this update are like that. Also, I think this update has a pretty good chance of getting pushed to live soon, since it doesn't seem as buggy as it usually would be at this stage. The only thing I noticed while playing was slightly worse performance than usual. So anyway, I decided to spawn at Lorville since most of the bigger changes this update are to orbital stations, and I know Everest Harbor pretty well. So one of the smaller changes that I didn't see in the patch notes is that the game now reflects some of the recent lore posts about elections happening in the verse. So you can hear campaign ads in the background, and there's these posters all over. So here you can see one of the big reasons I'd recommend checking out the PTU, and that is that at least as of now you have access to all of the ships that are currently in game. So if you want to check one out, especially if it wasn't available during Fleet Week, you can do it now. Personally, I tried out the 600i Touring since I've only ever flown the Explorer version. So as I'm leaving Hurston, you can see one of the things that they did talk about a lot in action here. So force reactions are now in the game, and even though I'm just gently leaving atmosphere here, you can see I'm still getting some turbulence when I'm just walking around. I'll say the effect is pretty good in first person, but it's not quite as convincing in third person, so we'll see what changes they make to it. But yeah, when you're just walking around your ship while it's in motion, it's pretty cool to have these effects. Another one of the changes that they did mention is that they completely reworked countermeasures. I'm really excited to test these out some more in the future. Even though this update is pretty light on gameplay, I think the changes they've made to missiles are a great step in the right direction, and will really help with quality of life. So here you can see me deploying both types of countermeasure, and it's easy to see how much you have left of each on the HUD. So I want to go over these more in depth later, but I really like the system a lot more now. Since you don't have to choose a specific countermeasure for a specific type of missile, it's just a strategic choice of how you want to counter the missiles. There's a lot of changes to missiles in general though, so I'll probably make a separate video about how they interact with these new countermeasures. Also, you can now see what missiles you're using on your HUD, and you should actually be able to choose which ones to launch first, which is great. If you do want to swap between missiles, you have to actually bind a key in the settings right now, because it's currently unbound, and the MFD doesn't seem to work for that yet. This will probably change as it gets closer to live though. And here you can see another small change, but it's one that'll probably add a lot of gameplay, which is that you can now fire your ship's weapons in Station Armistice zones. You still can't fire any sort of FPS weapons, so you can't do any combat on foot, but if, for example, you're chasing a bounty into an Armistice zone, they're not safe as soon as they get within range like they used to be. Now to make sure it doesn't get too crazy, the defenses at these stations have been upgraded. So you can see a ton of the smaller orbital turrets around the station on my radar, and I believe these are the same ones that you fight in the Claim Jumper mission. These are mostly meant to deal with smaller ships, and they pack quite a punch when they're going against fighters since I think they carry size 5 weapons. But larger ships have other turrets to worry about. So these are the big turrets they added, and these are brand new, and you definitely don't want to get hit by these. I think these are size 10s on top, but as you can see they're massive, so it doesn't really matter what size they are. So yeah, if you have a crime stat, it's going to be much harder to be around these stations now, and I would not sit still for too long in range of one of these large turrets. Another small change that's pretty nice here is that you can now see where your ship is parked on its marker. This is a really nice improvement as you don't have to remember what pad or hangar it's parked at when you retrieve it from the vehicle console, or if you forget where you land. 
So one change that I think they really undersold in the patch notes is the station interior redesign. They did mention it, but I thought they would have just shifted things around slightly. However, it's a pretty big change, and I think it's needed because in the future, stations will have a lot more areas, with cargo decks being added now and refineries coming later, and who knows what they'll add even later on. So yeah, instead of having just even more sprawling hallways, you now have much more compact levels that are dedicated to different things. This makes these stations a lot more convenient, especially since the HABs are right next to the vehicle retrieval consoles now, so you can get there right after you spawn instead of having to walk for a while. I'm glad these stations are easier to navigate now though, especially since Port Olazar will probably be removed sometime soon when Crusader's landing area is finished, and that used to be much more convenient than any other station. Now they're pretty similar. But yeah, as you can see here, you have a level for the ship retrieval and hangars, a level for the food court and shops, and a level for cargo decks. There are even signs telling you where to go in different areas now. Very nice. And you'll be able to spend your time in stations actually going to where you want to go instead of just running down every single hallway trying to find where stuff is. So moving on to the cargo decks, which are one of the bigger features in this patch. They are in the game right now, but they don't really have their main functionality of being a hub for traders. They do have some functional additions though. So here you can see that they've included a vehicle rental kiosk. The selection here isn't great, but I guess they've just included the most cargo focused ships that are available to rent elsewhere. It would be nice if you could rent things like the Prospector to avoid having to go to Loreville to rent one, but they might expand what's available later. What's pretty nice though is this shop. So some of the shelves here seem to be missing since this is the PTU, but pretty much all the stuff you need to go hand mining is here. It's a lot more convenient to be able to pick it up all at this orbital station than having to go somewhere like Levski or multiple different stations like you had to before. So I'm glad they added this little shop. And here's what cargo decks look like from the outside. So the crates out here are a bit smaller than I expected, but Everest here seems to have two of those whole assemblies, so I think there's plenty of space for cargo. So anyway, that's all I have for this video, but if you want to see anything else from the PTU, be sure to let me know in the comments. This update doesn't add a ton of gameplay, but it seems like there's been a lot of small unannounced changes, and they can really add up. So remember to enter my giveaway if you want to, and get ready for Star Wars Squadrons coming out in just two days. Thanks for watching.